Good afternoon. Well, technically still morning. Uh, my name is Erin and this is Simple Art for Adults. Today we are going to do our very best to finish up our last two ornaments for our Christmas color along in Johanna's Christmas. Um, we did choose the 12 ornaments page and so far we've done a pretty fantastic job. I think they all look really, really nice. We've got some glitter pen happening in a few of them. I know that some of you guys have ventured out on your own and tried your own color combinations and styles and that's just fine too. All of them I've seen looks absolutely lovely, every single one. So this one was a little bit tricky for me because once we get down to the bottom two ornaments in the corner, it's kind of hard to really pick colors because what I'm trying to do is balance all the colors across the screen here. And I've realized that I've got all my Tuscan red over here. Um, so we're kind of, we're kind of going to have some Tuscan red bunched up because I'm going to use it here too. So what I've decided that we're going to do is we're going to make this Tuscan red and um, our cream combination. And then we're going to make this one our green and red again, kind of like this one up here. But what I'm going to do is I'm also going to throw in the uh, cream at the top. So we're going to have the green and red. The birds are going to be the reds. Um, the decorations down here are going to be the greens. And then we're going to have cream at the top. Um, because I feel like this is kind of a divided ornament and it's going to suit it well if we do that. So that's kind of what I really would like to do. I am so dehydrated today, guys. So if you hear me stopping to take a drink of my Coke every so often, I do apologize for that. It has been the craziest last couple days. My oldest daughter, who is 15 years old, started her very first day of actual work today. So she has a job as a hostess in a local restaurant, and she's very, very excited about that. And I'm very excited for her as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with this ornament, and the outside of this we are going to do in our beige combination. So we're going to need cream is our lightest color, beige is our medium color, and then peach is going to be our uh, shadowy color. So let me zoom in on this just a little bit, and we'll go ahead and get started with the outside of this. I'm knocking change off my desk. I'm sure you can hear that. <laughs> it's all right. I'll pick it up later. This may actually have to be uh, the video. I may have to split it up into parts just a little bit um, simply because I have other things going on today. I'm not sure how long I'm going to have to color all at once. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my beige and I'm putting a very, very light layer all over the area that is around these embellishments. That's the very first thing I want to do. And I'm also going to put the beige in this little center right here. And I'm going to get it down here. And up here, just that little area there. So everywhere that surrounds that embellishment there in the center, we're just adding a very light layer of the beige to start. Or the cream, I'm sorry, this is not beige, this is cream. And these are two of the more complicated ornaments on the page, although I don't think it's gonna beat this one. That one was pretty complicated. But I think we made short work of it and we made it look very nice, so. These I'm not going to color beige. We're going to actually put our darker colors in there and in all of these as well. All right, so now that I have my light layer of beige surrounding that, or cream, oh my gosh, guys, you can tell I've had a, one heck of a weekend already, can't you? So now I'm going to come in with my beige. It really is beige this time. And I'm going to pull the beige out toward the center. Again, I'm just using a medium or a light pressure, a little bit heavier than the pressure that I use with the beige, but still a light pressure. Again, for those of you, if this is your first time watching this uh, tutorial, the reason why I always start out with light layers is for color placement purposes. Once I have my light layers in, I can take a look and make sure I have my colors where I want them because it's easy for me to go in and erase or do whatever I need to do if I don't feel like I'm happy with it. Um, it's very hard to take color away if you just go in with a really heavy hand from the outset. And again, we're going to add more layers. So if you see a few pencil lines here and there, 
Don't fret. There's no need to fret. Like I said, I'm just pulling this down toward the center because we want our highlighted area to be right here. This is the, going to be the last part in the series, guys. So if you haven't seen the previous ones and you're interested in following along with us, make sure you go start out at number one. It's in the Aaron's Christmas Color Along 2017 playlist. You'll find all the videos there. And you can start out with the very first one and work your way up. Now I'm just going back to make sure I have my beige everywhere that it's important to be. And again, I'm not being too terribly careful. Just making sure the color is down. Right, so we have the cream left right here in the center and the beige all around it. Finally, I'm going to take my peach and I'm just going to do this around the very edge. Again, with light pressure. And what I'm going to do once I get this in is I'm going to come back and actually outline this edge and we'll go in a little bit darker because we want our shadow to really stand out. And that's what's going to give us the appearance that the ornament is actually round and not just flat on our paper. All right, so now I'm gonna come in a little heavier and go around the edge just as an outline. Gonna avoid these embellishments even though I got a little bit in there that's okay my other color should cover it up and if not I can erase it I erase a lot when I color a lot I have this bad habit of getting outside the lines all right so now what we're gonna do is just go around the edge and pull this peach out just a little bit we're going to use medium pressure out toward the outline and lighten it as we come toward the center and we're just doing a little tiny bit of it. Do you want to put a little shadow under right there? So how has everyone's pre-holiday season been? Have you been doing a lot of shopping? Have you been doing a lot of stressing out over shopping? Are you finally finished with your Christmas shopping? Now that we have our peach all around the outside, I'm going to come back in with beige and go over everything. We're going to use a little heavier pressure this time and push it out toward the center. And this is just going to mix up that peach we just put down and blend it in a little better. So the only child I have who's really actually told me that they want something for Christmas is my son. He wants airsoft guns. And he even sent me links to the exact ones that he wants. So that is always very helpful. Because, you know, at, the, at their age, now that they're teenagers, it's so easy for us to buy the wrong thing for them. And, you know, they'd be grateful anyway, because I've, not to toot my own horn, but I've raised some pretty amazing kids. But it's always nice for something like Christmas, and they're asking for something that's relatively inexpensive to start with. I think it's nice to get the right thing for them. So it was really nice for him to take the time and do the research and send me a link to the one he wanted. Uh, my daughters, on the other hand, haven't really given me much of an inclination as to what they want, so I'm thinking I'm just going to give them cash and they can use that for whatever. I'm just taking my cream now and going back in with a heavy pressure and blending everything back out. This is going to need a little bit more beige because I didn't get it quite dark enough there. There we go. Oh, I don't want that. I want this. So heavy pressure with the cream now just to fill in all the spots to mix up the beige. 
And to create that seamless blend, it's going to make it nice and pretty. And there's the outside of our ornament. It's all finished. All right, let me take a drink. Now, the inside of this we're going to do in our Tuscan Red combination. And while I'm taking a drink, you're going to need your um, Burnt Ochre, Tuscan Red, and se Sepia. Or Sepia. I know, I've heard it said both ways. So first things first, I want to take my lightest color, which is the Burnt Ochre, and I'm going to do a really light layer over everything, just as light as I can get it. And this is going to serve as our base and help us mix our colors better when we get into layering. We're literally going over every little part of this embellishment. Remember guys that when you're trying to blend your colors out and create a seamless blend, and especially if you're going to use a blender pencil, you need to have several light layers of pencil down in order to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to get a very good blend in your blender, blender, blender pencil. Your blender pencil is just as likely to scratch right through the color and damage the paper than to actually blend your colors together. So before you reach out for that blender pencil, make sure you've got enough color down. On the other hand, if you've chosen to use odorless mineral spirits to do your blending, um, a good rule of thumb, and I was just I was just talking about this with Anne. If you haven't seen her latest video over to Colorful Life. She um, actually got her odorless mineral spirits out and tried it on her page that she was coloring in Hannah Lynn's Christmas book, and I was so proud of her for doing that. Um, but the general rule of thumb, just to help everybody out, and what I've discovered and what I've learned, with a blender pencil, you want several layers of color down before you use it to make it work right. For odorless mineral spirits, like Gamsol or the uh, Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner, you don't have to have very much color down at all to use the odorless mineral spirits. But do keep in mind that the less color you have down, the more, miner the more mineral spirits you want to use. And the more layers you build up, the less you want to use. Because as that wax starts to build up more thick on your paper, what's going to happen is, is you're going to have, if you can imagine it, you're going to have like a little coating of wax on your paper. And when you go in with a chemical, so let's say this is my brush, and you go in with a chemical and you melt that down, it's going to turn it into basically paint and it's going to end up moving way more of that color around than you want. So once you've got a bunch of layers built up and you're going in with your odorless mineral spirits, you need a barely, barely, barely damp brush to do that. Now, like I said, if you have um, only like this much color and you want to use odorless mineral spirits, then you can use a little more to blend it out and um, you're not going to see that effect happen. So now I'm going in with my Tuscan Red around the edges. And I'm going to pull this in and kind of draw myself a little imaginary circle where I don't want any more of the Tuscan Red. And this is just going to be for the, um, the main circles. Not these little doodads here, just the main uh, swirly things is where I'm putting my Tuscan Red right now. And I'll show you why here in a minute. Again, I'm just using light pressure to get that Tuscan Red in there. Starting at the tips of the little curl and coloring it back. Back toward the center where I'm lightening it up. And this we're going to go ahead and do all on Tuscan Red because it's like off the side of the ornament in this too. And we've got another little curly cue here. I'm going to bring that down, and I'm just going to kind of feather it in to the burnt ochre there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is all the tops of these little loops, I'm going to color these in Tuscan Red. For this, you can use a medium to heavy pressure. 
um, because that's what color they're going to stay. I'm not going to bother too much with blending and shading these parts. But because Tuscan Red was the main color in our palette, I do want some of it to be there. I want it to be noticeable. And I got outside the lines a little bit there. But that is okay because I will take, I'll knock more money off my desk. I will take my trusty electric eraser and we'll just take that off. And then I'll come back in with my cream and fill it back in. All fixed. No big deal. Oh, that's sepia. We don't want that. A sharp pencil is really going to help for this, guys. Because these little lines are super skinny. I knew these last two were going to be quite a bit time consuming, but that's okay. What I'll likely do is when we finish this one, I'm going to take a break um, and go find my other pencils that I'm going to need to do the ornament this one. And then we'll come back and finish that during the same video. Make sure I have all the little white space covered. I don't feel like I went heavy enough with these, so I'm going to go back over them. Okay, now, very carefully what I want to do after I... Actually, I don't want to darken those up too much right now. What I want to do now at this point is take the Tuscan Red and start shading these little um, circles there, those little loops in there, and I'll show you what I mean. This is the Tegal sharpener and I'm using it on setting one, so it's giving me a nice short stubby point and that keeps my Prismacolor tips from snapping off. So I haven't had a single Prismacolor break since I started using this and it was a gift from a fan, so I'm so, so happy to have it. And for this, I'm gonna go in with light pressure and do it about two thirds of the way up for each of these. And do the same here. And the same here. And the same here. So basically everything you see I'm going to shade two thirds of the way up with just a light pressure. And this is going to make our Tuscan Red really stand out as our main color in this case. This is a little strange over here, so we're just going to do the same thing here. And I forgot a loop it looks like. All right, now we gotta get these down here at the bottom. And some are very small, so it's a little tough to make sure I'm getting the color in there correctly. Like I said, I'm just using light layers at this point to make sure that I have the colors in the right places. Now I'm coming back in with my sepia, which is my darkest color, and I'm going to start um, at the edges here, and I'm just going to bring a little bit forward, just like that, and brush my dust off on every one of the little swirls that we colored initially, so just like this.
And this is going to be our shadow color. All right, that looks nice. Now I'm going to take the sepia and down in the very little corners of each of these, I'm going to add some of that color for shadow as well. And I'm using a medium pressure when I do this because I'm going to come back in with all the other colors and help blend it out. All right. So I'm going to take my Tuscan Red one more time. I'm going to go over the sepia and bring it up about two-thirds of the way. Just like we did, so we're just coloring over the area we've already done and covering over the sepia. I didn't get any sepia in that one, so let me put a little in there. There we go. Again, you're using a medium to heavy pressure, but you're not creating a harsh line. Back to sepia because I didn't do these down here for whatever reason. And we need, for this, we need a little Tuscan Red also, because I didn't put any there. Okay. I'm going to mix the sepia and the Tuscan Red in the areas where they meet on the swirls. like that and a little bit like this all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lightest color again which is the burnt ochre and I'm just going to fill in the rest of the ornaments just like this Now you are going to hear a civil defense siren. I live in a very small town. So every weekend at noon on Saturday and Sunday, it, it's like a test. Those are our uh, severe thunderstorm sirens too. And they test them every weekend. I don't know if any of you guys um, have this too, but in my little town, they're also used for fire sirens. So if you've heard the term, you know, four alarm fire, five alarm fire, they use that alarm for fires to alert the firemen too. So if it goes off like four bursts, then it's a four alarm fire. If it goes off three bursts, it's a three alarm fire. And the town's literally so small that all of the volunteer firemen can hear it. It's pretty neat. It also makes you a nosy member of your community because you kind of, you know what's happening when you hear that happen. You know something's on fire and you wonder who it is and... You get nervous because you know everybody. At this point, guys, I'm just filling everything in with a medium to heavy pressure. And this is going to be a little browner than this, which is okay. Um, I don't want all the ornaments to look the same and have the same colors in them. So we're just trying to stick mostly within our palette. There goes my change again. I'm just knocking it all off. That's so funny. And be, now that the dark color is in here, it's a little harder to see the cream. So I'm going to go in here and brighten that up just a tiny bit. And there we have that ornament. Let's zoom out so you can take a look. I'm going to color the top of it with a gel pen. Oop, that's the wrong way. 
I think that looks nice. So I've done these ones in gold and these ones in gold, so it's time for some silver. I am going to erase my smudge that I just got on my page from my finger. And I have a little smudging happen over here too. These little white erasers, guys, if you get Prisma smudge on your paper, these things are fantastic. Um, this I picked up at Meyer; they were like two for a dollar. You can get the... Um, Oh, what company makes them? Pentel or something. The high polymer erasers, those are really nice and they're really cheap too. So you can get those online or at Walmart or at your office supply store. Just the white plastic polymer erasers. All right. I think that looks pretty nice. I really do. I like the way that turned out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to put all these pencils away, and I'm going to come back with the pencils we need to finish the last one. So like I said, we're going to do the bottom green, and the little swirls that the, the birds are setting on, those are going to be green. And then the top part is going to be um, the, cream, the cream color we used here. And I know that that's going to put two colors right next to each other, but I still think it's going to look nice, and it's going to look nice with the red and the green. All right, I will be back with you shortly. All right, everybody, it's been about 20 minutes for me and about a quarter of a second for you, but I am finally ready to start this last ornament down here. And um, as I was saying before I uh, took the break, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same combo that we used on the outside of this ornament. We're going to put it up here on top. Then we're going to take our green and we're going to do green down here along the bottom here and on the little swirls. And then our reds we're going to save just for our little birdies. So once again, what I'd like to do is start with our lightest color. So I'm going to start with cream. Let me see if I can move this book so it is where you can... <laughs> I can't believe there's still money. There must have been $100 a quarter sitting up there. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I'm knocking change everywhere. So first things first, I'm putting a light coat of cream all over the top portion of this ornament. Now again guys, if <clears throat> if you don't like my color combinations or if you don't think that these two ornaments are going to look nice together, because trust me, it took me a little bit of time to really think this through and in all honesty, um, I don't think another combination would have really looked much better than this. Uh, but if you think so, then you are welcome to use any colors you want. This is just how I'm coloring it. And I'm giving you uh, my step-by-step -step in case you're wanting to follow along. Following along is not mandatory by any means. So again, we're just putting our lightest color down first, which is our cream, and I am not being neat about it. I am just getting the color on the page. All right. Now this is going to work a little different with the beige. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to start here, and we're going to go around the edge, and we're going to pull it out toward the center. And like we did with the other ornament, we are going to leave a small circle here in the middle where it's just the cream. So we want our beige to be nice and light at this point and we can gradually make it darker as we pull it back toward the edge of the ornament. So my cream or beige is darker here. And I'm fading it out. Beige is darker here. And I'm fading it out. Now we can also put some darker beige down in here. It's going to help give us our 3D effect. All right. So again, I'm starting heavier at the edge of the ornament. Not too heavy because we have another color. But a little heavier and then lightening up as I come toward the center and that's going to help us preserve that uh, cream colored highlight
All right. I think that looks nice so far. So now let's take peach, which is going to be our darkest color, and we're just going to put this around the very edge of everything. Except down here. I don't want to put the peach down here. The peach is what I'm using to give the ornament the appearance that it's rounded. So I don't want to put it on this dividing line. Because I'm afraid that might make our ornament look divided in half. And we don't want that. So I'm outlining it rather darkly. Just around the very edge. Just like this. And then I'm pulling it in over top of the beige that we just laid down. But not too far. I'm going back over it to make sure I've got it dark enough around the edges. And just a little shadow under there. All right, so now I'm going to take my beige again and I'm going to go over that peach and pull it back out. And this is just to blend those two colors together. I'm using a heavy pressure at the edge and then lightening as I go toward the center. And the goal is to kind of blend those harsh lines where the pink peach is. Mix them into the beige. And the beige is supposed to be our main color, so we want more of it than we want of everything else. And we're still preserving this little area in the center where it's going to be brighter with the cream. And I think that's really going to make our, uh, we're going to do the birds in this color, and I think it's really going to make them pop. All right. So now we have that. Now I'm going to go back with my lightest green color. We're going to do the green and we're going to do the swirls next. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with my lightest green color, which is actually I think we went with lime peel for the lightest color. So I am going to do a very light layer of the lime peel. I'm going to hold my pencil on the side and just kind of fill the area in. Our swirls are also going to be green, so a very light layer of lime peel up here. Once again, I'm putting it all over. Up into the little swirls. Just like that. Alright, so our medium green color then is going to be the apple green, and I'm going to start at the edges like we did before, and I'm just going to pull it out. So this whole thing should be apple green. This will be apple green out to about here. Same thing here. I go ahead and color these swirls in with the solid apple green. And like we did um, over here, I'm going to take the apple green, zoom you in just a little bit further here, and I'm going to go right over these little swirls, just like this. I'm using a heavy pressure because this is going to be the only color there. Okay. Um, I think what I might also want to do is just take a little bit of this apple green down here on this bottom. Just like that. Alright, so now our main color is in. 
So now let's reach for our olive green. We're just going to do it right here on the edges. I'm not going to add very much of the olive green at all, just a small, small amount. And again, I'm doing it here to give the appearance that the ornament is indeed rounded. And I'm going to put just a small amount right here, just for shadows. All right, so I'm going to take our second darkest color, or our main color of the apple green, and we're going to go over the olive and blend these two colors together. Just like that. I'm also going to blend this out. Pull it out to there. Well, yeah, about there. Again here, we're going to blend these two colors together in this area. Make sure I've got all the white space covered. And this is going to stay strictly the lime peel because this is going to be our highlight area. So now I'm going to take the, the main color and about two thirds of the center of this I'm going to color. Just like that. So we want a little tiny highlight of the lime peel just right underneath that darker area. And then one more time with olive green, I'm going to add just a hint of shadow down there in those little corners. Just like so. And then the apple green again to blend out the olive. Still preserving that little space of highlight there. And then last but not least, to finish out our swirls, we're going to take our lime peel again and we're going to go right here at the top of these areas. And we're just going to fill those in. And then we're going to use a medium pressure to get our highlighted area colored in. Just like so. And it appears I need to put a little bit more apple green. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. We want this to be lime peel too, right here. I forgot about that. My bad. So we're going to put lime peel over that and blend it down. And then more lime peel right here on these little highlighted areas. And so that will be our green swirl. Simple enough. So down here, we're going to mimic the effect up here, but I'm going to do it with apple green. I'm going to start at the edge. I'm just going to pull a light layer of apple green out toward the center. And you guys may not be able to see this very well yet, but you will. And I'm using light layers again just because I want to make sure I like the way the colors look and I like the way they're placed. Because if I don't, I can go back in and erase it as long as I've just used very light layers. And I do think that looks the way I like. So I'm going to take olive green and we're going to just basically outline around the bottom edge. I'm using medium pressure for this. And then I'm going to go back and I'll pull that olive out just ever so slightly. And don't worry that you can see the line because the apple green that we're going to put back in a little heavier is going to blend that out for us. And this is just again to give the impression that the ornament is indeed round. All right, so now we're going to take apple green now that we have our shadow color in and we're going to go over the shadow color completely and we're going to still pull it out toward the center. You want to make sure you lighten up as you get to this point because we are going to put our highlight color in there and we don't want to we don't want a harsh line between the two. All right, pull 
this out just a little bit more in a couple places. Very light pressure when you're pulling it out because again, we're going to put the line peel here and we don't want a, a visible line. We want it to be a seamless blend. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in with the apple green and just trying to cover up all the white space uh, left behind by the pencils. And I'm feathering it up into the area where we're going to put the lime peel. And you may have to work this and work this until you like the way that it looks. So now I'm going to go in with another light layer of lime peel and I'm just going to pull it down into the apple green. I think that's very cute. Okay, so for our birds, which is all we have left, I'm gonna start with blush pink because we're gonna make this our carmine red color. So I'm gonna start with the blush pink and just very lightly make the entire birds pink. Very, very light pressure. All right, now what I'd like to do is take my carmine red, which is gonna be our main color, and I'm going to go along the top of the bird, just like this, all the way out to the wing. I'm going to pull this down, just like so. I'm going to leave this part here, the blush pink. I'm also going to start right here with his belly, the color under his belly, that color. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that he has some dots here on his head. A lot of time that indicates where a shadow or a pattern or something should be. So I'm going to take my carmine there also and just color it. And I'm going to leave just the tip of his little nose pink. And I'm going to do the same for this bird over here, only in the opposite direction. Now because magenta is supposed to act as our shadow, that's all we're going to use it for, is just shadowing. So I'm going to start back here with his belly, and I'm just going to do a little line, like a little tiny outline, and carry that up. So that's quite literally all the magenta I'm putting on his belly. Same thing here. And then we can put a little line right here where his head meets his body. And then a very, very thin line right here. Now what I want to do is take my carmine and go back over these areas and mix the magenta in. Darken up the carmine just a little bit. But be careful as I pull it down toward the wing because I do want to be able to mix my blush pink back in there. So we're going to do that everywhere that we just put the magenta. We're going to blend it out and up toward the highlight very carefully without losing that highlighted area. And then finally, I'm back in with the blush pink. I'm going to put this here on his wing. Bring it up. We're going to put it here on the top of his chest and carry it down toward his belly. I'm going to do the same here. And then just the little tip of his face. And that is that ornament. So I'm also going to take a silver gel pen. 
And I'm going to finish this part out. This one's darker, I think. I'm going to try to avoid the little dots as best I can so I can come back in with a different color. I didn't do a very good job of that, but I think there's enough left for me to do what I want. There we go. And then I have a green gel pen. And I want to use that in these little dots. And that is the end of that ornament. And I think it turned out cute. There, we didn't have a blue or else I would have used blue in it. Um, but we didn't have one in our palette. And I didn't think the purple would look right. So at the end of the day, we do have two ornaments here that both have the same color in it. But because the colors uh, used with it are so very different, I don't think it looks too bad at all. And there we have it, guys. We have officially completed our uh, color along in Johanna's Christmas. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this. And I will be planning another color along or color in chat. If you can follow along, great. If not, that's okay, too. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do it in yet. I do have Tenderful Enchantments on the way, so I'm thinking um, that might be what I color. I'll also be recording the Sunday Funday video here in just a little while, so that'll be ready for you guys to, uh, to look at tomorrow morning. We will be doing our live stream tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central Time, and I will be announcing the winners of the... Uh, Black Widow colored pencil set so that's really really exciting if you haven't seen that video head on over there check it out Make sure that you leave your comment if you want to be entered again guys Thank you very much for tuning in don't forget that I do live streams every week on Facebook at 7 p.m Central time just check your local time zone and make sure that you are there um, At 7 p.m. Central you can support my channel in a lot of different ways Just liking this video and subscribing using the button down below is very helpful you can find links to the products I used in this video down below as well. I am an Amazon affiliate, so every purchase you make through one of those links does help me uh, just a little bit. I earn a few pennies for every order you place. You can also help support me via the tip jar link, and you'll find that downstairs as well. Um, that's a one-time contribution. You're not under any obligation to do so, and it is safe as it's done through PayPal. Thank you very much for joining me today, and as always, happy coloring.